नमस्कार डॉक्टर साहब आपकी स्माइल से लग रहा है वी आर इन इट इज अ गुड अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर मी टू लर्न फ्रॉम ऑल ऑफ यू ऑल यूर ऑल ऑफ यूर सो लर्न इट एंड यू विल क्रिटिकली एनालाइज वॉट आई प्रेजेंट आई एम लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू दैट गुड आफ्टरनून डॉक्टर साहब हाँ जी गुड आफ्टरनून जी कैसे हैं सर बहुत बढ़िया सर फर्स्ट क्लास आपका पहला सेशन खत्म हो गया हाँ जी हाँ पहला था आई जस्ट लॉक आउट ऑफ दैट इमीजिएटली आई रिक्वेस्टेड देम टू लीव रिलीव मी एटलीस्ट फिफ्टीन डेज बिफोर द एंड ऑफ इट वो चलेगा तो थोड़ा बहुत जो ब्लैक कोट को हैंडल कर पाते हैं ना वो व्हाइट कोट ही कर पाता है थोड़ा बहुत जो ब्लैक कोट को हैंडल कर पाते हैं वो व्हाइट कोट ही कर पाता है बाकी कोई नहीं कर पाता आई नो आई दैट्स राइट इट इज ऑलवेज इम्पोर्टेंट या इट इज ऑलवेज इम्पोर्टेंट टू लुक एट वॉट यू टेंड टू इग्नोर सो अदर पर्सन सी इज इट टोटली फ्रॉम ए डिफरेंट एंगल डिफरेंट परस्पेक्टिव विच इज क्रिटिकली इम्पोर्टेंट एंड इक्वली यूजफुल Okay. That's correct. So, uh, Bijar, I think uh, with the yeah. permission of uh, Mr. Mathur and Justice Sanghi, may I uh, comments? Yes, I think, sir. We eight minute, hello. Ah, uh, one o'clock is the time, Abijat. We eight minute, hello. welcome manoj hi dk good morning good morning in fact then thank you i must uh, tell everybody he is the president of our club now mr rotarian manoj jain <coughs> hi everyone good afternoon i am primarily now representing him also thank you अभिजात ऑनरेबल मिस्टर जस्टिस विपिन सांगी जी डॉक्टर अनिल अरोरा डीएम गैस्ट्रो सर गंगाराम हॉस्पिटल एंड आर की नोट स्पीकर टुडे मिस्टर मोहित माथुर सीनियर एडवोकेट a distinguished uh, president of the bar association mr jatan singh our evergreen and young young vice president respected members of the executive of the delhi high court bar association mr uh, dk rastagi past president of the rotary club south east and a lawyer of great eminence respected members of the bar it is a great honor to welcome all these eminent personalities and learned members of the bar to this virtual talk and uh, the bar association is extremely thankful to all who have connected and are participating to have taken time out of their hard earned sunday vacation there can be no doubt that the past one and a half years and more the entire human kind has seen unprecedented devastation and lack of preparedness especially in the second wave was the cause of uh, countless casualties and huge uh, adverse impacts of the evil virus no we are not prophets of doom i speak for myself and which we was shared by my members of my executive also that it is extremely unlikely that the 
there would be a third surge. Also for the reason that majority of us are completely vaccinated. There could be a spike here, some post-Diwali spike, some post-Festivity spike, spike here or spike there. But I don't see the threats to be extremely real. Hope and optimism are two things which distinguish the human species from the others. We are all hopeful and share the optimism that in the not so distant future, the functioning of our revered institution would be in the same manner as it was in the pre-pandemic era. With that hope in mind, we all strive with courage and hope that things like the new normal, etc. become matters of history. Having said that, in the unlikely event, and God forbid, that a third wave is indeed witnessed, one mustn't be caught unprepared. We would, should be armed with the knowledge of what to do and what not to do. So many lives were lost, so many casualties happened, so many after effects of the dreaded virus were faced because we were caught unaware. The powers that be were caught unaware and the public at large was caught unaware that there was not enough information and there was a lot of trial and error which in modern, in modern society should be ideally avoided. It is with a view to, to make one prepare, make one arm with the knowledge of what to do and what not to do, that this virtual talk has been organized by the Bar Association. I am thankful to all for having taken out time. And uh, now it is an honor to call upon our distinguished president, Mr. Mohit Mathu, senior advocate, to deliver the welcome address. Mr. Mohit Mathu. Thank you. Abhijan. I would address all those who are not speaking to please be on mute throughout. Thank you, Abhijat. It's a pleasure to welcome my Lord Justice Vipin Sanghi, Dr. Anil Arora, the Rotarians who have been kind enough to organize this, and uh, a special thanks to our vice president who uh, not just uh, has been ever green and uh, ever young as uh, Vijat said, but has also been ever active even during this pandemic uh, in helping everyone in the community to somehow uh, get out of this mess. And uh, towards that, Jatan Bhai was kind enough to organize this so that as Abhijat rightly said, we are able to clear all doubts and the myths that are floating around. I welcome everyone today for sparing their uh, Sunday time, which generally is leisure time. And for lawyers, it is uh, a very special day to recuperate and rejuvenate oneself. So I thank everyone who has come today. And uh, we thank Dr. Anil Arora, who is here amidst us, to clear whether this third wave is a myth or a reality. And assuming it is a reality also, is it something which we in a state of preparedness can conveniently and comfortably each one can handle its onslaught and mitigate whatever impacts that the second wave has actually given us. And this, uh, this so-called third wave, which uh, we had been uh, apprehending right from August, it's, we have already uh, now come in September. So I would also request Dr. Saab to enlighten us 
whether with this 70% vaccination in Delhi, and I speak only for the Delhi statistics, which we keep hearing, and the fact that uh, today's newspapers also said that the entire month of September, we have been lucky that the fatalities have only been three uh, on account of COVID. Would it be more easy for the uh, citizens of Delhi and uh, lawyers in particular to come back to their normal self, have the physical courts resumed with the protocols necessary to somehow uh, take care of themselves and their loved ones. So, Dr. Sir, we'll need your uh, uh, knowledge to be disseminated here so that we understand the truth behind this, all these things. With all the sectors opening, even now, uh, now with the, even the Supreme Court feeling that the full resumption is required, a physical resumption is required because the access to justice cannot be by remote and people need to come and courts uh, are our Karam Bhumi. So we need to get back to our Karam Bhumi to do the service that we are actually trained for. Often we have been told that uh, history repeats itself, but that doesn't mean that the impact has to be in the same line and same tune, which it was a century back for the previous pandemic. The surges, as uh, our uh, honorary secretary has uh, said, surges may be there, but can Dr. Sab, uh, we know how to keep those surges uh, in numbers okay and the impact reduced so that none of us lose any of our loved ones or uh, have them suffer. So we would request uh, Dr. Sab to uh, enlighten us on this and I am thankful that he could uh, spare time for us. And uh, I know he's been on a back-to-back -back conferences and uh, webinars trying to help people and give this knowledge to uh, people, spread it around so that we can do it. I welcome the Rotarian president also from uh, Rotary Club Southeast and I thank uh, him and his uh, team members including our uh, dear Mr. D.K. Rustagi, who's a council of uh, eminence, as uh, Abhijat rightly said, and has come forward to help us in organizing this. So welcome everyone. And uh, I'll not detain your time so that you actually get the requisite information from Dr. Sab and uh, Justice Sangi will have his word. Thank you, sir. Welcome everyone. Over to you, Abhijat. Uh, thank you, Mohit Bhai. Uh, I now call upon and request our guest of honor, Mr. D.K. Rustagi, past president of the Rotary Club Southeast, and a lawyer of great eminence and a man with a very subtle sense of humor, which I have had the happy occasion to interact with him, to please address us, Mr. D.K. Rustagi. You are mute, sir. Mr. Rustigi, you are unmute. unmute. Mr. Rustigi, unmute, unmute. Thank you, Abhijat. I think I am now audible. Hello? Yes, Loud sir. and clear, sir. Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Okay. Thank you, Abhijat, for this honor. My Lord, Mr. Justice Ribbon Sangiji, Mr. Mohit Mathur, our president of the Delhi High Court Bar Association, Professor Anil Kumar Arora, who is our key note speaker today, and a person of a very great eminence, Mr. Chatan Singh, the Vice President, and all honorable judges attending this webinar, my senior colleagues, my friends at Bar and the Rotary Circle. Now, as I fully agree with me, our Abhijat, our Honorary Secretary, that there may not be the third wave as severe as we have witnessed the second wave. But, and that is the reason I find the timing of organizing this webinar 
cannot be more appropriate than this because organizing webinar of this nature is the only is the only way in a preventive health care which is found to be very effective in last one and a half years it increases public awareness to many fold and that is how we have prevented severity in first wave but yes we lo lost our guards and we witnessed second wave but anyhow we, this is uh, uh, with the guidance of our professor anil aroda we will be making every endeavor so that the that impact of second wave will not come into the third wave or third wave may not come at all now it is my privilege to be associated with this webinar not only as a concerned member of this august bar but as a representative of the rotary club of delhi southeast i am thankful to my vice president ratan singh for providing me this opportunity to associate my rotary club for this wonderful efforts of delhi high court bar association to organize this webinar i am thankful to my president manoj jain for a timely response we in rotary club have a rich tradition to organize minimum 3 to 4 such speaker meetings on a preventive health care we have seen disastrous effects of a second wave and i am i will not lose this opportunity to thanks the bench led by our own justice mr vipin sanghi who came forward not only to rescue the uh, uh, rescue in sorting out the chaos created but to ensure time bound raising infrastructure requirements such as oxygen as a resident of delhi i take this opportunity to pay my gratitude for that extraordinary efforts we successfully managed to overcome substantially the severity of that phase thereafter comes the necessity to augment preventive measures to avoid third wave in this inoculation drive was a main component and i must acknowledge serious efforts of the executive committee of the delhi high court bar association undertaking uh, undertaken during this pandemic they have been organizing many camps which includes the most vital one is to provide vaccination drive for those who were not having the timely access to the government sponsored vaccination drive i am thankful to the abar tere building i am thankful to the executive committee for providing opportunity to rotary clubs for supplementing their that effort and one such camp was i remember very distinctly now organized in august 2021 when more than 1000 persons were benefited on this account we as a rotarian believe more in a preventive care than cure this is one of our seven major avenues of services we have experienced that dropping care and caution in undertaking preventive measures will not help to eradicate this menace we have reached a long way due to super duper efforts of medical fraternity who are rightly called corona warriors listening some of the well known authorities on this subject is a way forward for a mass participation in keeping the guards and caution on i sincerely hope with the caution suggested we will be in a position to open up in a delhi for a physical hearing this is a demand from litigants as well as a legal fraternity we still have long way to go a streamline long hearing through video conferencing the same require a premium devices and infrastructure which major part of our young fraternity particularly is not in a position to afford now before parting i must take this opportunity to announce that our club shall be leading the efforts to organize a very advanced healthcare camp for our board oh. members on a first available opportunities and i will be coordinating with my our uh, our honorary secretary for this also and this camp shall include some of the features which are never undertaken such as kidney liver heart health of advanced level advanced nutritional guides bone and lung related tests cancers and prostates 
with the assistance of a well-known group of in a dynastic era, arena. Thanks once again to everyone for this opportunity to join this webinar. I now, I, uh, I must not take much time and now hand over mic for uh, people to listen to our keynote speaker. Thank you, Abhijat, once again. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rastagi. And uh, hats off to you for having taken the pain for organizing this uh, talk, which will undoubtedly be very helpful to all that who, uh, all those who have connected. I now call upon our chief guest, the guest of honor, and a member of the August bench of the High Court of Delhi, Honorable Mr. Justice Vipin Sangiji, to kindly address us and shed light on the subject. Justice Vipin Sangi, please. Namaskar, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Sir. Uh, so, uh, firstly, I would like to thank all of you, the organizers, to ask me to participate in this webinar. Uh, it is my pleasure, and uh, I have no qualms participating on a Sunday afternoon. I'm happy to be here. Uh, I think the subject of this webinar is uh, very pertinent. Uh, how to prepare for the third wave in case we are faced with one. And the importance of the subject can be gauged by the fact that uh, the second wave uh, hit us all very, very badly. Uh, we were in a way unprepared to meet the, the scale at which it hit us. But the other problem also was that because it's a completely new virus and our, uh, med is the, our medical fraternity is still uh, struggling to find out how it is behaving, what is its nature, because what we are experiencing is that uh, it is not showing any consistent uh, pattern of behavior in all patients that it is afflicting. Uh, different people are having different kinds of symptoms, different ways in which it is affecting people. So the doctors are also grappling with that situation. Uh, since I was, I've been dealing with the matter on the uh, judicial side in the public interest litigation. Just to make this point, uh, as you all know that we were grapp grappling with a lot of uh, shortage of oxygen uh, during the second wave which was not experienced during the first wave, probably because the numbers were also less. And the way the disease hit the patients uh, was also not the same way maybe. So uh, in one of the hearings, uh, we had uh, one of the senior administrators from uh, Max Hospital. And uh, I put it to him that uh, Dr. Saab, uh, you have set up such a huge facility. It's a premier hospital of the city. And why is it that you have not provided sufficient infrastructure for oxygen? Why are you so dependent on external supplies? And his uh, reply was that, sir, the monthly expenditure of the hospital is about 100 crores. In normal times, all that we spend is about 1 lakh out of 100 crores on procuring oxygen. So that is how insignificant uh, it is in normal times. And uh, we were therefore just not prepared to deal with the huge surge in demand uh, of oxygen. So when we talk of the possibility of a third wave, uh, Dr. Saab is here, he will speak to you about it. But my own take on this is that uh, uh, what we are seeing is that uh, uh, India is in a way lagging uh, one step behind, let's say, Europe and America. And uh, that we saw even during the second wave, we did not act in time uh, to the extent, extent that we could to deal with the second wave. Uh, despite seeing the second wave take a huge toll in European uh, countries. So now what is happening is in the UK, for example, is 
that the third wave is very much there. But the good thing is, the, the news coming is that people who are vaccinated, uh, they are uh, facing the, uh, the disease with much greater resilience and there is hardly any hospitalization required in patients who are uh, fully vaccinated. And there's hardly any fatality amongst that uh, class of people. So it is only those who are not vaccinated, it is they who are facing a problem uh, during the current third wave, which is hitting uh, the Western world. So if that is the pattern, then we may have a third wave, uh, uh, but it may not be as severe. It may not leave an impact of the kind that second wave has left on us. It may not cripple us in our systems in the way that, uh, that the second wave crippled us completely. And uh, hopefully after uh, from what we have learned from the second wave, and because of which the infrastructure has also improved. Uh, for example, oxygen supplies have improved. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to better deal with a third wave, if at all we were to face one. Um, on the aspect of how this uh, disease is, is panning out, I may only say that, uh, just a minute, please. Uh, the, uh, the disease, uh, as I said, is not showing any definite way in which it is uh, it is affecting us. And uh, Dr. K. K. Agarwal, when he was there, he was once telling me that uh, he had uh, collected data of ten thousand people who were afflicted with the disease. And what he was doing was that on the basis of the symptoms that the patients were showing, he was trying to uh, draw a pattern, see how it is behaving. And uh, I remember he was amongst the first uh, one, the only one that I heard many, many months ago, maybe last year. And there is a video doing the rounds also on that aspect. He would say that, look, if you lose uh, your taste, and your smell, then you should celebrate. The reason being that means that it's a mild COVID and you're not likely to suffer any major problem. So these kind of studies need to be done. We have a lot of data which has been collated, bodies like the ICMR or even institutions like Gangaram who have treated so many patients and other institutions aims uh, I think somebody needs to sit with the, with the case studies and see that uh, what are the patterns which are emerging uh, so that they are better prepared to deal with patients in the, in the coming wave, if at all. Um, so I feel that uh, the, the real problem is with the stake. What is at stake in case we are hit by a third wave? then what is at stake? If it is our lives which are at stake, then of course we need to, we will have no option but to take very severe steps like we did for the second wave. But if it is, if the stakes are not that high in the sense that it is not going to uh, cause fatality and we are able to deal with that situation, then our response uh, as a society uh, should be graded and therefore we should uh, not uh, go into a complete lockdown stage like we have done for the first two waves. Because uh, life has to go on and it's important that we return to normalcy as early as possible. Actually, what has happened is many of us, because of the uh, pandemic, we have sort of gone into our shells and uh, we are therefore not coming out uh, as much. We are still keeping home. Uh, so far as lawyers are concerned, they many of them are finding it very comfortable to go on with the with the uh, virtual hearings. So even though courts have resumed functioning physically, uh, partially, uh, 
we still have a lot of lawyers who are appearing only through the hybrid mode. So uh, that itself creates some problems. We, we would also prefer that when they are sitting physically, lawyers are there. Uh, because it becomes difficult if uh, there is a hybrid hearing that you know, one counsel is in court, the other is connected virtually. Uh, there are problems with uh, the councils being able to hear each other and all kinds of things. So I think the way forward is that we should uh, open up more and more, take cautious uh, steps, while at the same time uh, maintaining proper COVID protocol I think masking is extremely important and very, very crucial. We cannot lose, uh, you know, uh, lower our guard on that. We should continue to properly mask ourselves and uh, maintain distance wherever and also sanitize our hands, etc. And um, I think that's the way forward because we cannot uh, let this virus, uh, you know, change our lives forever in this manner. We need to reclaim our space and we need to uh, you know go on and as it is said that this uh, eventually this uh, virus will become endemic and it will turn into another simple flu kind of situation so let's hope uh, we have seen the worst of this pandemic and it's behind us and uh, so i would now request uh, uh, our uh, Speaker, uh, Dr. Sab, to enlighten us all for this week. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Justice Sanghi. Uh, and as citizens of this uh, capital city, we are all extremely grateful and obliged for uh, your efforts on the judicial side in uh, the provision of oxygen, hospital beds, and whatnot. Which, uh, which actually rescued th thousands of uh, people who were very badly impacted by the virus. Um, I now have the honor of uh, inviting our keynote uh, speaker, Dr. Anil Kumar Arora, DM Gastro, Gangaram Hospital, and who is also a, a great expert in the, in the study and uh, treatment of this uh, virus. So it's our honor to have with us Dr. Anil Kumar Arora, and I invite him to shed light on the subject. Dr. Arora, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Abhijat. At the outset, I'm extremely grateful and thankful to Delhi High Court Bar Association for giving me this excellent opportunity of interacting with you. I'm also thankful to the Rotary Club of South Delhi, ably led by Mr. Rastogi and Mr. Jain. With special thanks to uh, Mr. Jatin Singh, Mr. Uh, Mohit Mathur, and it is my proud privilege and an honor to be speaking in front of the learned Lord uh, Justice Ripin Sanghi. I think he will be the best judge to see the, what I am talking is make, does it make sense or does it have any meaning? With that, uh, I'd like to uh, share my slides. Uh... Harsha Jainji, can you enable uh, screen sharing, please? No, I don't want to use my iPhone with iTunes. Uh, are my slides visible now? There is something uh, not so relevant on the screen, sir. Okay, I'll just uh, stop sharing and go back again. Yes, now it's visible yeah. clearly. Okay. Yeah. Okay, the other slide visible now? Yes, yes, clearly, sir. Clearly. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The topic which has been allotted to me uh, by Mr. Jatin Singh and his team is third wave of COVID 19. How do we go about saving our country? What is the wave? And what is the third wave? In fact, we are, in English language, we are so used to knowing about the waves which come in day and day out in terms of hurricanes, in terms of tornadoes, and in terms of other devastation which occur on day-to-day -day basis because of climatic change. But surprisingly, 
this perfidious virus, which has devastated our economy, as has been mentioned by all the learned speakers, has caged us as human beings. And this is affecting us directly rather than through the climate. If you look at the way this has been affecting our life, in the first way, we had almost one lakh cases per day reported at the peak of the first wave. But we had a perfidious, devastating, very ferocious second wave, which had occurred not long back ago, but only a few months back in April and May 2021. What was this second wave due to? It was possibly because of the virus behavior or mutation of the virus. The virus is very smart. It has to grow inside the body of you and me. It has to utilize the services of the machinery made within our cells, our body cells. So once you tackle a virus, it quickly changes its structure and shape, tends to become B. And once you're able to take care of the B, it has a tendency and the wherewithal to change to the type C. So by the type you are able to handle, take care of it, and try to devastate virus A, it quickly mutates to type C. So it has to survive as much as you and me have to survive. Possible causes of the second wave are human behavior. We, at least in India, are very apt at breaking all COVID norms. That is where I'll request the services of our learned judges to be more stringent with our law administrator as to why do we not follow the social norms which are important part of the society. If you look at the latest research recently published from a word authority in which they had ranked the behavioral patterns of individuals which are important for your colleagues in and around you. If you look at our status, we were ranked 54 compared to the best social conscience practices which are practiced by Japanese, Norwegians, Scandinavians and people living in the uh, Eastern Europe. So why is it that we do not follow this, uh, follow this normal behavior, which are so important for breaking the chains of continuing transmission of this perfidious virus? Another thing is we have been gloating about the, our success in the first wave without realizing that second wave might come till we have this gentleman, Dr. Vijay Raghavan, who announced early in May 2021 that third wave may be inevitable. Will it come? How long will it take to come? What will be the velocity of this wave? How ferocious this wave will, will all depend on the logical conclusion which we are going to draw with from the presentation. But let's go back to about one century ago. And uh, you know this pandemic would occur once in a century. And most of us will not be able to see it. Fortunately, will not be able to see it in the next pandemic. In the last pandemic which had occurred almost in about 100 years ago you have three patterns of the waves so you will have multiple small waves this is the pattern of the h1n1 or swine flu influenza pandemic in 1989 you may have small first wave followed by a ferocious second wave this is what we had seen in delhi and india and then you have a virus which tends to come with a bang and then continues to flicker around in a hopping up and hopping on, hopping off phenomena in an endemic manner. So why the third wave? In fact, if you simply remember this code, which is so very important that no one is safe until everyone is safe. So first wave, the generalist approach was, oh, we have won the word. We had our own people saying that we have got the vaccine guru. We are able to overcome the problem. We will not, never have the second wave till it came so devastatingly clear to us that almost all of us had feared the mortality at the heart of our hearts. That is what makes us think, are we going to have a third wave? Are we likely to come down with new variants of the virus because the virus has a tendency to mutate on day to day basis? Why is it that we should have a third wave? This is a gentleman called Mahendra Agarwal. He's an engineer from IIT Kanpur. He uses a mathematical model which takes input from the various data collected by the ICMR, health surveys, and other health monitoring authorities and puts it into a computer to come to a logical conclusion. So the input will decide what is the output. According to his calculation, we are likely to have a third wave 
somewhere in the middle of October. Let's come on to the logistics of incoming wave. Why should we have it? You see, the reason why should we have a third wave is that we should know what percentage of the population has been vaccinated, what percentage of the population has been incidentally or accidentally exposed to the uh, to the COVID-19 infection and how many of us have got incidentally exposed to COVID-19 infection with, without having a symptom complex which is so known and typical of COVID-19 infection. If we have the good baseline data, which unfortunately is missing from Indian subcontinent, so we cannot, cannot have a very good prediction model because the model after all will give you an output of the quality of input which you put in. Let me come back to the virus, which has really uh, shaken us all around. I'm sure all of you would have seen for the first time this pandemic. So there was a gentleman who was an ophthalmologist and an eye specialist in, on 17th November in, uh, in uh, China, he noticed a patient with atypical pneumonia. Mind you, he was an eye specialist. Still, he was observant enough, he was intelligent enough, and he was conscious enough to to al alarm the authorities in the China that this was an atypical pneumonia. But as is known, this Chinese authorities simply just rebuffed him. They think, oh, he's talking nonsense. By the end of the first week of December 2019, Chinese authority did realize that they were having a number of patients of atypical pneumonia in which the patient would get respiratory distress and difficulty in breathing in a short span of time. And credit to them, we have to give them credit of what they have done. Within one month, they were able to come out with the genome of this new virus, which was a coronavirus. Since it was not an old coronavirus, so they didn't know how to name it. They said it was a novel coronavirus. So as these Chinese people and the trade, which is an important component of the China's economy, the people started going out of the country. So more and more people across the world continue to take the virus away. So WHO, did say at this point of time on 30th January that this was a public health emergency of international concern. By 11th February, the International Committee on Taxonomy of the Virus said that this is a novel coronavirus and they named it as a SARS-CoV-2 or Se Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2 virus was, named, was the name given to it. And this is the name of the virus and disease which it causes is called COVID-19 because it was uh, discovered in, in uh, 2019. And by 11th March, WHO declared it as a pandemic. There has been a lot of criticism of the WHO as to why the hell did they take about one and a half months to declare the uh, virus as a pandemic when there has already been spread up about 60,000 of cases of this virus. And if it would have been curtailed right at the time, maybe we didn't, wouldn't have seen the pandemic. Let's see what are these coronaviruses. Coronaviruses are not known, not new viruses which have emerged out of the blue. They are known to be existent in the universe for almost 5,000 years ago. In fact, up to 5,000 species are known to be existent in the uh, universe. Typically, it affects the bats. But once in a while, the virus has a tendency to jump the species. It may jump from bat to a camel or from a bat to a civet cat. Once it jumps from a bat to an animal and from an animal to the human beings, it causes severe disease. So whenever the virus known, is known to jump to two species, so two species jump is something which causes problem. And hence, in the last 20 years only, we have seen coronavirus, which are present in the universe for almost 5,000 years, jumping and getting into the human mankind uh, arena for almost 20 years presenting with two epidemics of SARS-CoV or the COVID virus first infection. And then you had this Middle East Respiratory Syndrome which had landed up in 12, uh, 2012. So this was in uh, 20, 2001, this was in uh, 2012. And in, look at this, what happened in both the cases. In both the cases, the number of both the epidemics of coronavirus infection, we had limited number of the cases Mortality was high in MERS epidemic, but then we did not have this such big, huge number of the cases which we are seeing with this virus. The basic difference between the first coronavirus, which came in 2001, and the present day coronavirus, which came in 2019 and 20, was that 
we knew the source of the infection in SARS-CoV-1 infection. We knew that it is the civet cats. So you cull all of them, you'll kill them and you break the chain. Secondly, most of the patients who were spreading the infection were symptomatic. That means they were either having fever, pain, vomiting or cough. And hence, if you isolate them, you get rid of the infection, you break the chain. Unfortunately, in COVID-19, we do not know what is the reservoir. And hence, you cannot cull the civet cats. We have a lot of patients who are asymptomatic. That means a lot of people who are coming to you as lawyers for uh, uh, consultation, they, they may be carrying the virus since they do not have symptoms, so you do not suspect the virus, neither does the incoming innocent guy suspect that he has a uh, symptom of COVID or he's suffering from COVID. So a large number of the asymptomatic cases with mild cases, it has resulted in this epidemic. What is this virus? It has a simple genome. It is covered by a envelope, which is, is a good covering. Then it has multiple spikes on its surface. Since this spike, they look alike the crown on the head of the prince. So this is the reason it is called coronavirus, that is crown-like virus. And if you look in detail and magnify the structure of this spike protein, this is how it looks like. This is a magnified view of the spike. Mind you, this is an important component of disease process. This is the component against which all vaccines are made so that if you neutralize this component, virus cannot get access into the body. Once the virus comes through the inhalation into the alveolar tract and into the lungs, it tends to enter the lung cells through this mechanism of attachment of this virus to this receptor called ACE2 receptor. The spike protein of the virus attaches to, to, to this ACE2 receptor and is quickly taken into the cell. Once it's taken into the cell, it has an excellent mechanism of using the machinery made within the body. This is a ready-made machinery within our own cell. It is like some intruder entering into your kitchen. He sees the bread, he sees the eggs, he can make the omelette. You already have a, all the utensils and the cooking gas and everything is available for preparing the breakfast. So the guy enters into your house, uses the pre-formed, pre-mediated kitchen and gets out with a good amount of the food and goes to the next house. This is what virus does. It enters the cell and it blocks the, it, it invades the, it tends to evade the defenses of the body and tries to utilize the formed machinery of the body. In the normal course of the events, when the intruder will come into your house, your caretaker, your guard will rebuff him away. Somebody will throw him out. But this virus is peculiar. It tries to neutralize all the defenses which are present in the body and keep, tries to keep on multiplying. So this is what virus is doing. It has entered the cells and it keeps on making merry and keeps on multiplying within the cell. And once the cell is dead, it gets out of it without even knowing that the defenses of the body have been neutralized. So all the defenses in the body, which are in the normal course of the events, they are neutralized. So one virus enters into the cell, millions of the virions virions are produced and they are put out into the circulation to affect the other cells of the body. So this is the basic problem with COVID-19 infection. So you have a poor response to the virus once it enters into the cell. That means once somebody has entered your house, your security guard, your caretaker has not bothered to look into who is coming. So this guy comes in, uses all your machinery in the house and then goes from the back door out in multiple shapes and forms. So depending upon how good or bad your response may be, depending uh, upon your age and other factors, which I'm going to tell you soon. If you have a very good initial response, you have no disease. If your initial response is poor and you let the virus multiply, then you have a delayed response of the immune system, which causes disease. And finally, if there is no response, you will neither have a disease nor the effect. So there is a good study published from all over the world and all of us know very well, depending upon your age, the complication and the mortality related to COVID-19 is different. Look at this pediatric age group. Look at this younger age up to the age of 50 years. There is hardly any mortality. But as the age is advancing, you have much higher chance of dying and having complication, need for hospitalization, ICU with increasing age. The more the age, the more the chances that you will have more complications. So aging is related to your immune system. The more, the, the higher the age, poor is the immune response because the immune system gets fatigued with increasing age. 
Moreover, there is a direct correlation between your body weight as well as the immune response. The fatter you are, the bulkier you are, the more fat you carry in the body, more is the problem in terms of your response to the incoming virus. So there is a spectrum of presentation which can occur with the COVID-19. You may be asymptomatic, you may have mild disease, or you may have severe di disease, depending upon how your body uh, responds in terms of immune response. And that is precisely the basis of development of the various therapies which are in the vogue for treatment of COVID-19 infection. But I'll talk of what is important for prevention from the public point of view. Practically speaking, the only treatment today for prevention of the COVID-19 infection is development of a vaccine. The, we have fortunately two vaccines which are already available to us. The first is the vaccine which was discovered and originally, originally, originally conceptualized in University of Oxford. This is called University AstraZeneca vaccine, which is manufactured by Serum Institute of India in collaboration with ICMR in India. So this is called Covishield vaccine, which has a high efficacy. Then we have this Bharat Biotech vaccine, which is an indigenous product in which the whole virus is inactivated and it takes much longer to establish. If you look at today's data, we have already inoculated 78 crore Indian population with the vaccine of which 90% is from the uh, from uh, uh, Covishield, that is Serum Institute of India, and only 10% is from Bharat Biotech vaccine. Sputnik vaccine has already been authorized for its utility in India, but there are problems of logistics of availability, and still it's not as popular as other vaccines which are available. So this is the range of all vaccines. Most of the vaccine which we are using can be used in children uh, in Indian scenario beyond the age of 18 years. These are the volumes to be used. And if you look at the efficacy, almost all the vaccines available across the board have almost equal efficacies. Whenever you give a vaccination, two things you have to remember. One vaccination is not enough. In the first vaccination, it is like trying to appear for your exam. You have a preliminary exam, then you have a final exam. In the primary immune response, you give spike protein in an inactivated manner into the body to which the body responds. And if you give a second dose at a specified interval, which is decided by the manufacturers and by registration trials, you do develop a very good secondary immune response, which is, has a lifelong protection. So for all practical purposes, all vaccination of any nature require two doses for good efficacy. Who should, be giving the vac who should be getting the vaccine? In fact, everybody in India above the age of 18 years is eligible for vaccine unless there has been a problem earlier with the adjuvant of the vaccine which gives you allergy. There have been some contentious issues. Should patients or individuals with clotting factor deficiency, coagulopathy, platelet should be given? All these patients can be given under the supervision of a doctor. In fact, earlier there have been some hesitancy as typically occurs in pregnancy because of the lack of literature of its safety, uh, efficacy and safety in uh, pregnant women. But now more and more data is being available. In fact, even American Society of, Gast of Obstetrician and Gynecologists has already recommended the use of this vaccine in pregnancy. Even Indian Gynecological Ob uh, and Obstetrician Federation called FOXI has recommended its utility in pregnant women who are at risk of developing COVID-19 infection. There have been a lot of discussion, a lot of debates regarding the opening of the schools, the lack of vaccination for children. As of now, in India, I am glad to announce that we have a new upcoming vaccine from Zydus company called Zydus COVID-D, which is likely to be available by mid-October where all children beyond the age of 12 years are likely to be eligible, eligible for COVID-19 infection. We have a total uh, cohort of about 40 crore children below the age of 18 years who require vaccination. So there has been a lot of debate regarding this, but the, uh, so there are some rich countries which have been vaccinating their children, starting with US, Japan, Germany, and Israel. There have also been some contentious, contentious issues regarding the validity of our vaccine called co-vaccine, which has not been authorized or certified by WHO, but I'm told another 15 days, WHO is going to give a, uh, a certification of authorization to even co-vaccine. For the time being, Covishield is the only vaccine which has been certified by the WHO for uh, purpose of travel for the students uh, outside India. 
most of the side effects after vaccination are mild they can be easily managed and if you if need be you can take you know drugs like paracetamol for a day or two and these are not serious there have been some serious side effects reported in children in israel and that is the reason in the first batch of children vaccination because of the inflammation in the heart called myocarditis the vaccine was withdrawn where are we in india we have only two vaccines as of now and zyco uh, vd vaccine which is from uh, uh, zydus company is likely to land up for pediatric age group in mid october sputnik is likely to come and then we have other uh, vaccine which are in the pipeline we have a good news that there is likely to be a intranasal vaccine being produced by bharat biotech in which you may be able to avoid the intramuscular injection but why do, do are we likely to have third wave again i like to quote this beautiful quote called no one is safe until everyone is safe if you look at the total population of the world which is to the tune of about 7.5 billion only 1.5 billion have been vaccinated we are all human being we always interact it is the same climate same environment which we breathe and if only rich countries keep vaccinating their population what happens to the people in the other countries travel continues trade continues air is the same which is circulating all across the globe so to for the prevention of the total mankind in terms of its devastation and the economic burden we need to vaccinate everybody on the earth so there has been a contentious issue whether a booster should be given or not in fact if, if if you look even at our own data a country which is the which is the hub for manufacturing the uh, vaccine for the whole world we have been able to vaccinate only 44% of our population for the first dose and only meager 14% as two doses which are supposed to be effective as a stand alone treatment or prevention for covid 19 we still have a long way to go so the uh, requirement for third dose may be Uh, may not be important as of now if we talk of human kind in general but if you look at the countries like us who have redundant vaccine their own people are having hesitancy in taking the vaccine and they are recommending to take the third vaccine for their own fraternity which is not a good thing third wave is likely to come when the virus is allowed to get uh, into the uh, circulation and into the people who have not been vaccinated if you look at the reports coming from the us only those who have not been vaccinated are getting hospitalized they are getting icu treatment and they have the mortality none of the vaccinated people will get the infection and chances of having a severe infection need for icu care or need for hospitalization or death is extremely low so if you want to prevent third wave it is important that all of us have to be vaccinated when is the third wave likely to come coming to what mr abhijit abhijat said that since we have our own data that 70% of our population has zero prevalence of antibody moreover a substantial portion of our population about 60% has already been vaccinated so if you look at the daily alone i think most of us have been either incidentally or accidentally exposed to the covid-19 infection so the chance of having a third ferocious third wave is very low that doesn't mean we should lower the guard that only should push up more towards having vaccination in the standard doses as recommended by the manufacturer and continue to use the preventive measure of mask rather than being lenient about it so the best way to defend the third wave if and ever it comes which is unlikely as per my own assessment is that we have to be sure that anybody who goes to a court or anybody who attends a court you should be doubly vaccinated till then you have no reason to be coming to court if you have already had an infection then please get your antibody tested lockdown now is not a solution and we have seen the economic burden which has been borne by the country safety is first you should understand if you have to get a vaccination and if you are not vaccinated and if you incidentally carry the virus to your colleagues you are a threat to others for as a part of maintaining the social conscience and social behavior to protect others it is important that you get vaccinated in total so vaccine is the best option we need to speed up our vaccination drive recently on pm's birthday you would have noted that we were able to do 2.5 crore vaccination of per day if we can do it on that particular day that means we have the wherewithal we have the resources we have the manpower we have the vaccine why can't we do it on daily basis because if we continue to vaccinate at the pace at it was was done on pm's birthday we should be able to have a complete comfortable sleep within next two months
and if all of us are protected then our children will also have much less exposure to the infection so we can quickly and rapidly open up the school the court the hospitals the mall and everything so our uh, economy springs back to the normalcy which we are so used to it the word about the covid 19 vaccine about the hesitancy we should realize that by the time you develop a vaccine and you put it to general use mind you it takes 15 years for the people to accept the vaccine in polio vaccine drive which was discovered and found to be efficacious and safe it took the public 18 years to realize that polio can be eradicated with the vaccine because people are hesitant on an average it takes five um, years for any vaccine to be proven efficacy to an extent where it can be safely given to everybody and anybody but since this was a unprecedented situation this is the first time world record that the virus which was discovered on 10th january landed up with a vaccination against it in the end of december such a short span of period i think we should give full marks to the scientific community for having discovered it not only that i think we need to have a round of applause for the judiciary which stepped in at the right time for streamlining the need for oxygen the need for availability of the bed and seeing at the horrific situation i think it was only the intervention of the judiciary which made the government come to terms and give an affidavit that all will be vaccinated by the end of 31 uh, by, by by end of 31st december for vaccination of the adult population but for the judiciary i do not know how long we would have waited for streamlining of this vaccination i think it is an important role played by the doctors the medical community the administrators and the judicial judicial apparatus to have uh, got us out of this very difficult ferocious second wave the biggest problem in the vaccination drive till recently has been the availability of the vaccine so i am happy to announce that as per the government of india notification in september uh, in october 2021 we are likely to have 23 crores of vaccination which will be equivalent to almost 1 crore vaccination per day but again reminding you that if we can vaccinate on a particular day 2.5 crore we can jolly well make all efforts to do the same on day to day basis so possible way to overcome this will be to increase our vaccination which is at the moment Uh, to the tune of about 50 to 60 lakhs per day to jack it up to about 1 crore so we can if we do not make the vaccine we can import the vaccine which are already available at a uh, substantial cost from the foreign land we can buy the vaccine as we has been suggested to the government of india but till then i think it is important not everything is to be done by the doctors by the judiciary by the government we have to inculcate our own habits we have to maintain social distancing we have to follow the excellent principles of social conscience which have been perpetrated by japan and taiwan why not we learn from it why is it that we people are so brash if you look at the number of the stabbing which are done on road traffic accidents on day to day basis just because somebody's bike brushes against somebody else's car and the person stabs these things are something which can be taken very should be taken very seriously because socially if we are good not only will be able to decrease the crime but also prevent ourselves from this propitious weight there are two ways of ensuring wearing mask one is this way of force which has never worked second is we should inculcate the habit in our own children teachers educator counselors have a big role in just telling all of us the relevant role of social conscience not only in preventing the pandemic but also the life in general so what next so likely impact of the third wave is in case it comes it is going to have severe economic injuries it can have have substantial effect on the health structure it is likely to affect the young and children as much as it had resulted in the mortality and the causation of morbidity in old age resulting in loss of education loss but my own take is if we have been vaccinated enough and if we have significant zero prevalence we are unlikely to have a the third wave which is going to be as ferocious as the second wave so we all know that second wave is almost declining as almost absent in delhi it is prevalent only in limited states like kerala maharashtra or mizoram third wave can be prevented if and wherever it comes we need to strengthen our healthcare system 
as uh, uh, as uh, uh, Lord Justice Vipin Sanghi said, that we spend so little on maintenance of the oxygen. So I think it should be an eye opener for us as medical personnel, and we should heed that advice very uh, properly and carefully. We need to boost up the vaccination drive so that we can prevent the occurrence of infection from one person to another. If all of us do our job well, you in the judiciary and we in the medical profession, and forget what, what others say. If I'm allowed, I'll just share one yeah, beautiful video and then we I end up my presentation. <laughs> I think uh, this is a good lesson that let's do our job properly for the welfare of the community. With that, I'll hand over the proceeding back to the administrators. Many, many, many thanks, uh, Dr. Anil Roda, for a very enlightening and uh, informative uh, talk on the subject at hand. And uh, I am a firm believer in the power of the Lord Almighty, the God. And uh, with these words, I, as is customary, call upon our evergreen vice president, Mr. Jatan Singh, to please uh, propose a vote of thanks. Thank you, Abhijat. And uh, thank you, Dr. Anil Arora, for uh, giving such a wonderful, enlightening uh, information to all the listeners. So uh, I will uh, start my vote of thanks. एक बार uh, अकबर ने बीरबल से कहा कि बीरबल कुछ ऐसा लिखो कि जब उसको अगर गम में पढ़े तो खुशी हो और खुशी में पढ़े तो गम हो तो सिर्फ दो लाइन लिखी बीरबल ने ये वक्त भी गुजर जाएगा तो uh, ये वक्त जो हमारे ऊपर चल रहा है तो ये परमानेंट रहने वाला नहीं है or it was rightly said uh, to Akbar by Birbal. So, uh, first of all, uh, before I uh, say my vote of thanks to the uh, galaxy of the speakers, I would like to pay my uh, respectful homage to all those members of the bar, uh, members of the bench, and their families who lost their life in the uh, last two pandemics. So uh, we pay our Delhi High Court Bar Association pay its respectful homage to all of the, all of them. Uh, now uh, I would like to thank first of all uh, Mr. D K Rustagi, uh, who he is the he was the vice uh, he was the president of the Southeast Rotary Club. But as like uh, Mr. Mathur would be my all time. Uh, president in in the bar whenever uh, I look at the uh, person for being a president. So he would be all time president for me. Like Mr. Manoj Jain is sitting, no offense to him, Mr. D. K. Rufi would be all time president for me uh, because he, uh, you know, took us to this uh, Rotary Club uh, uh, when he was a president. So thank you, Mr. D. K. Rufi. Uh, uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Mathur, uh, who uh, very lightly said that Jatan Bhai, my Sunday jara bana ke rakna, but I say that our Sunday Dr. Aroda ne aaj aake aur uh, Justice Vipin Sanghi ne join karke our Sunday bigada ni bana diya hai. Aaj jo baate hume batai gayi hai, I understand that most of us may not be knowing all these. Uh, Final things which Dr. Arora told. So thank you, uh, Mr. Mathur, uh, for your uh, opening speech. And I would like to thank uh, Justice Sangi, to whom I always look at whenever uh, we 
uh, organize a program on behalf of the bar association so uh, me abhijat or uh, mohit ji or the entire committee because he is the senior most judge we look at him that he would be available to us and uh, would be guiding us so thank you so much uh, justice sanvi and last but not the least dr rora uh, um, i had a chance meeting with you but uh, today after hearing you and i have been hearing you on ndtv also for the last one week so you have been a wonderful person you are not a uh, such a high ranking and respectful doctor i saw you when two patients came to your cabin one was a very uh, uh, person from village side and other was showing to be very influential because he was talking to that doctor this doctor but the kind of treatment you gave to both of them it was exemplary you you are a great human person at heart and you you are jolly and you are witty also i saw that when you said bhaiya patake bhi to ladi chalate ho na ye ped dekh lo apna to uh, so thank you so much uh, dr aroda for uh, 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 being with us and sparing time because i know you are uh, i just want to inform the audience ki dr aroda aroda ke uh, jab clinic pe log uh, raat ko 1:30 1:30 baje tak jo apne ko dikhane jate hai to jhagde ho jate hai wahan pe ki bhai hamari parchi jo hai piche kaise reh gayi so he is such a famous and important doctor for the uh, medical structure in delhi so uh, thank you so much sir and uh, last but not the least the audiences uh, the people who have joined from rotary club delhi bar association executive committee and the members of the bar and the members of the public those who have heard this uh, webinar i think it is enlightening and educational so the la uh, last again uh, i'll end my uh, 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 vote of thanks by saying because jo is time hamara work chal raha hai wo abhi to bilkul aisa nahi hai ki koi ghabrane wali baat hai aur aage bhi nahi aayega to main yahi kahunga ye waqt aur ye mausam chala jayega ye waqt ye waqt aur ye mausam chala jayega tu ladna seekh le tu ladna seekh le to to tu jeet भी सीख जाएगा तो डॉक्टर साहब ने चार पांच चीजें बोली है कि हम सब कुछ जीत सकते हैं अगर वो मास्किंग सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग और ये सारी चीजें हम करेंगे तो कोई वक्त हमारे सामने टिक नहीं पाएगा थैंक यू सो मच एवरीवन एंड आई नाउ एंड इट ओवर टू मिस्टर अभिजात थैंक्स टू एवरीबडी स्टे से pull up your socks pull up your masks and fight and abhijat abhijat uh, i think uh, dr sir we you have uh, cleared everything we don't need to have a question after session because we have already uh, so, gone fact, beyond uh, this in yeah. fact uh, if if people like with a very modest uh, intellectual level as me could understand i am sure all the learned people who are participating would have all their queries would have been satisfied it was a very exhaustive presentation and uh, i don't think any topic was left unturned uh, so thank you everybody have a great sunday enjoy yourself and uh, we'll see you soon thank you and also and hope to see everyone back in courts as well yes yeah. inshallah inshallah everybody thank you thank you, thank you, so, thank you. Thank you so much thank you so much sir if there thank are any queries thank anybody has sunday. then i like to answer them any 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 time then you query you can write to me direct dr sir in fact i was tracking the chat box and uh, by chance you